strips. Uh, well, it depends on your perspective, you know. It, uh, what is your perspective? Well, I can tell you that uh, people who grow up in this country want to be, what, firemen and cowboys and pimps, maybe. You, know, you never know. Or sheriff. But I mean, sheriff. But nobody grows up here wanting to be a comic strip character, do they? <laughs> so I'm a pioneer, and no, I don't. Uh, I don't like it. Get a royalty? Hell no, that filthy little animal. <laughs> yeah, his parents sent him to Yale. They slaved and worked. They were humble people. And they sent this boy, they boy to Yale for four years. And all he learned to do was to steal other people's work. And uh, I don't know, it's a, it's a shock. But I don't, I don't pay much attention to it. I was in the middle of covering the Pulitzer divorce trial, which is really covering the uh, Palm Beach. Uh, now, I realize you live out here in this clean, uh, wet air and uh it isn't like palm beach and you can't imagine how really corrupt those people are and that's all i mean. all i did was explain that palm beach is like this when nobody works and everybody makes a million dollars a year just clipping coupons and and they fight over uh, inches of beachfront on the you know sand and well, remember that story where the, uh, the freighter washed up in one of those women's yards? That's Palm Beach. Yeah. She was amused. Amused. <laughs> Sat there. They had 81 Haitians washed up there one day, and they were amused. Yeah, dead Haitians. Boat people. Yeah, they're nothing to... Uh, Palm Beach is a funny place. Yeah, they got a sense of humor that won't quit. And... I would never claim they were guilty. I would have to go over to Roxanne's house every night uh, when I had to be in court. The, the, well, the press contingent was so huge, and they had 12 press seats, so you had to be there at 7 in the morning to sign up. No matter who you were, it didn't matter. So I would have to stay up every night at Roxanne's house, and those people would take cocaine in bags like the sort of thing you'd buy in a, uh, a drugstore with tal talcum powder and just shake it out on the uh, kitchen table. 
and, and say, well, we have to do it all now because we have to go to court in the morning. <laughs> uh, that was hard on me. And uh, yeah, they were more excessive than I was. Uh, Nixon's a guy who uh, admits now that he did not burn the tapes, and that was his, uh, his main failure. You know, Nixon was evil. Nixon, you know, he maneuvered. Nixon got to his knees, on his knees at night in the Lincoln room, and prayed to the portrait of uh, Abe Lincoln. And Nixon made weird deals, you know, with Kissinger at three in the morning. Nixon took Manolo, the butler, out at five in the morning saying, uh, after he drunk three margaritas, which is, uh, I mean, excuse me, uh, martinis, which was, when Richard Nixon drank three martinis, that was it. It was like, uh, the rest of us eating a lot of acid. Uh, uh, Nixon could not drink. It was not a racial thing or a uh, stature. Uh, I always, I wondered about it, it was karmic. And Nixon could not go out with his speechwriters and drink with reporters. He could not, he could not mingle. So when he did, he would go utterly nuts at night. And of course, his wife was a, uh, a, a question mark, a, a pretzel of some kind. And his family hated him and abhorred him. So he was left at night with Manolo, the butler. And unlike Reagan, who takes naps and goes to sleep, Nixon didn't. He would prowl the White House at night. And there was a... Uh, anti-war protests of some kind, when Nixon grabbed Manolo and said, let's go out and talk to them. And he went out and talked football to them, something about Ohio State. You know, like uh, 15,000 children underneath the uh, Washington Monument. Nixon had a sense of, let's go out and play. You know, well, not play, but he was a player. Now, Nixon, he was evil, but he would hurt you. Yeah, just to get into the White House to talk to Nixon was, uh, would keep you real sharp for a long time. Nixon or North or Meese, it's the same old bullshit. Nothing's ever going to change. Well, let me just tell you something, Sport, and I agree with you, and uh, I have done that and thought that way before, but let me warn you that uh, this time they are going to fall apart, and someone's going to have to pick them up. And this is democracy, and unless you're a, uh, a foreign national or an agent of a foreign power, and maybe even then, you may be the one to have to pick it up. No, that's the... Uh, yeah, we all pray for the uh, Armageddon and the, uh, the bonfires on the hill and the great shrieking and the, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, no, we want, we want the action. But we do live there, uh, and we're not going to die, not all of us, in this uh, Holocaust. And this is a dark thought, and I don't want to ruin your young life, but it's going to change. But nobody, I'm not going to take care of the change. Ed Meese is not going to take care of the change. You're going to be a part of that. And it's true. The mentality behind the drug? What do you use? What kind of stuff do you use? I'll tell you what I use. I, uh... Oh, I could tell you anything at all, couldn't I? <laughs> but I'm in a, I'm in kind of a, you know, a little bit dead end, ugly mood tonight. I don't catch them, and I beat them to death. It's just my. Uh... <laughs> Arnold Roberts is going to die very soon, isn't he? Big Al. Al ran it for a while. Yeah. He made the mistake of admitting it one day. Yeah. I would kill them all. Well, hey, I, I don't know what God's going to do. I've always, uh, 